Today in the news, FSR mods are out of control and Intel's Meteor Lake has three different cores. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. So a couple of videos ago, we talked about a mod from Nexus Mods' website that someone made for Cyberpunk 2077. Cyberpunk supports two upscaling technologies, FSR 1.0 and one of the newer versions of DLSS. What the mod did was take the DLSS implementation and scrap it to instead be FSR 2.0. It looks like after user Potato of Doom posted his mod on Nexus Mods, the community basically took that mod and ran with it. There is now a mod for, well, Cyberpunk 2077 with some bugs, Dying Light 2, Red Dead Redemption 2, Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, although there is some ghosting issues there, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, Death Stranding, but there are some motion vector issues here with the lower resolution modes, Horizon Zero Dawn with some hair glitchiness and Control with some minor menu glitches. If this tells us anything, is that one, modding communities are freaking awesome, and two, what are developers waiting for? If DLSS and FSR 2.0 are so similar, then why are there not more games with official support? In any case, the original modder and some of the people who made the other mods based on his work are currently trying to make a universal version of this mod. A version where you wouldn't have to fiddle with all of the game's folders and all that. The idea is you'd run an executable file and it would do all of its magic. So what are your thoughts on this? Would you actively mod your game to support FSR 2.0 or are you just fine with uh, lowering the settings to get more performance? Then we got Intel in the news, specifically some Meteor Lake news. Meteor Lake, if you didn't know, is supposed to be the chiplet or tile, that's what Intel calls it, based 14th generation of Intel processors. A high level overview of the mobile version of Meteor Lake was just leaked by none other than Igor's lab. And apparently it's got a lot of tiles, up to four according to the leaks. One of them is going to be for the compute tile where you'd find the CPU cores. Another is the graphics obviously, then you have an SOC tile and an IO tile. Apparently, there might be three whole different kinds of CPU cores on this thing. In the compute tile or CPU tile, you'll find the P and E cores based on the Redwood Cove and Crestmont architectures respectively, but apparently there would be a third type of cores called the LP or low power E cores. Now, there's a split in here that is pretty interesting. According to Igor, the E cores are simply divided into E cores and LP E cores. On the other hand, one Raichu over on Twitter says that the LP E cores are actually completely split up from the CPU tile and would actually live in the SOC tile. And that makes a lot of sense because these LP E cores would probably only be on mobile chips. It'd be a waste to use a CPU tile that would be shared across multiple segments like desktop CPUs to have LP cores that it's never gonna use. For Intel to split up some cores like that, the LPE cores have to be incredibly efficient. I'm smelling super long battery life here. Anyways, they also mentioned XELPG graphics with an extended gaming mode whatever that means. This graphics tile would support up to 128 execution units, which is the same amount as we see in the uh, ARC A380 desktop chip. Hopefully, by the time that this chip comes out, Intel will have ironed out some of the kinks on their drivers. And lastly, it looks like upscaling isn't the only thing where AMD is catching up to NVIDIA. For anyone who streams or records their gameplay, you know that unless you have a really good CPU, you have to rely on your graphics to capture and encode your screen. Unfortunately, AMD has not been the preferred choice here. Their AMF encoder has been the worst out of the bunch when compared to Intel's QuickSync Video or NVIDIA's newer NVENC encoder. If you wanna see a comparison of all of those uh, encoders, go check out Epos Vox's video on the subject. It's super detailed. Now though, it looks like AMD just gave its encoder a kick in the ass. They reintroduced B frames to their encoder, which boosts quality by quite a lot. Code Calamity did an analysis of the updated encoder, and it looks like its frame by frame score is much higher now than before. Now, is it as good as Intel and Nvidia stuff? Well, no, but now it's very close. Good on you, AMD, for upgrading your encoder. Just don't take it out again from a GPU, okay? I don't want another 6500 XT. 
Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, it's right here. To see the latest video, right here. To subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. You keep on falling, keep on falling. Always stalling, always stalling. Yeah, no one's riding, but I've been riding.